All right, peace and greetings, YouTubers. So we finally have some updates in relation to the allegations made against Fonnie Willis and what the judge has decided. Now, I was gonna cover this on my last live. However, the judge hadn't made a decision yet. And so here we are, because we finally have some real-time updates. So I'm gonna read a few tidbits and then we're gonna talk. The latest in the Georgia election interference case, Judge Scott McAfee, who was overseeing Donald Trump's election interference trial, ruled that Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis should not be disqualified from prosecuting the racketeering case against the former president and several co-defendants, but either she or Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade should leave the case. Just hours after the decision was announced, Wade resigned and Willis accepted his resignation. The DA's office announced, the choice was likely an easy one. If Willis had removed herself, the case would have been reassigned to another prosecutor, which could have jeopardized it. Defense attorneys argued Willis should be removed from the case because of her relationship with Wade, whom she hired in November of 2021. Willis and Wade have said their romantic relationship didn't begin until after he was hired, while defense lawyers alleged it began earlier. Willis has charged Trump and 18 co-defendants with racketeering for their alleged actions in trying to overturn the 2020 election for have taken guilty pleas. So I will say that I thought all of this was a stretch and then some. I was like, y'all are really, really reaching with this one. Like, y'all are trying to build a whole mansion with two bricks and half a nail. Make it make sense. And so the argument that was coming from the side that was making the allegations against Fonnie Willis was pretty much she is benefiting financially because it's not a crime for her and Nathan Wade to be in a relationship. But their argument was if there's a conversation of money and transaction, then now we have some questions. And their reasoning was because they both work for the same agency, when he spends his money on her, whether it be for dinners or dates or cruises or hotels, she's technically double dipping out of the company's salary because, again, she's pretty much the person in charge of this man being paid. And so by him doing these different services for her, she's benefiting. So that was the that was the argument. I said, y'all are really reaching with this one. But again, I also thought Fonnie Willis would be a bit more aware of what it was she was going up against, right? Like there's so many factors to understand that when you're going up against somebody like Trump, be ready for the firestorm of everything to hit. Because when I say they throw everything at the wall and, and hope something sticks, right? And so like, even before it got to this, Fonnie Willis was trending on social media all the time. The minute that she announced that, you know, here's all these charges, here's all the people who are being, you know, charged, that the racketeering this and the racketeering that, her name popped up so much, and, and why? It was because you had people already digging and trying to find something on her every day, right? Because understand, politics in this country has shifted so much where politics and, and, and how people move with politicians is now territorial. The days of specifically being about, I like this policy, or you know, I like this candidate, they seem likable, I'll give them a try. Those days are gone. We're now in a space where we've crossed a threshold that we can't go back and undo, right? You know, the, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Once Trump got in there and was able to do his Trump thing and, and kind of shift and, and, and rearrange how our politics works and how people move, we're never going back to the days of that idea of, oh, well, you know, Republicans and Democrats, they beef on the floor in the House and the Senate and they get lunch together. Those days are long gone, right? The days of a politician does their time in office and they move on and then you have the next person come. That, that stuff is gone, right? We're now in a space where people have become fans of politicians, but not just fans. They have an unwavering loyalty to some of these politicians. And I'm going to just stick with Trump because he he's the best example of this. An unwavering loyalty to this man, right? To the point where it's almost like a religion. Right? They literally worship the ground this man walks on because they see themselves in him. He's painted himself to be, I'm the voice of the voiceless. You know, if they do it to me, they'll do it to you, right? Even though I'm like, eh, no, we're not in the same boat because I'm not telling people to storm the Capitol. I'm not opening fake universities. I don't have all these lawsuits against me. You, you and I have nothing in common, N nothing, okay? Like the Whitney and Bobby song, we have nothing in common, okay? And so you have these people who it's almost a religion. And I'm talking about that special sec segment or that sector of the Trump base. It's not all of them, but you have a, a, a good proportion where this man is almost their religion, okay? I call them the Trump disciples, okay? The Trump Hova witnesses, right? They are, are willing to catch a charge for this man. These are the people who, you know, they, they foil and they put out bomb plots and, and, and threaten public officials. And, you know, these are the people who have literally just lost their minds. But these are the people who have done the most. They are willing to throw their livelihood in the trash all in the name of keeping this man in power, right? It's to the point where you have some Trump voters where if he were to cut off their hand, they would still vote for him. They'd be like, well, you, well, you know what? Actually, I, I was left-handed anyway. I don't even need that hand, okay? 
kind of reminds me of remember Tiger King on Netflix? You remember everybody was watching it during the pandemic. Um, but Tiger King, that was the guy that had the, the encampment with all the tigers, and he spent all the time beefing with the Carol Baskin lady. You know, that god dang Carol Baskin. If Carol Baskin, every fight, Carol Baskin, I ain't never seen somebody so mad at somebody before. But he had a staff member that was so pressed about working on the site with the animals that, you know, they had this crazy incident where one of the, the crocs of the alligators, like, bit their arm. You know, like, when they bite an arm or bite anything or flesh, they, they bite and then they spin and twist and try to rip it off, right? And so... He had that staff member who got attacked by the alligator, and they, their arm pretty much was almost ripped off. But they had the opportunity to go to the hospital, get the surgery, get the arm properly reattached, and then to heal. And what did that staff member say? They were like, oh, I didn't want to miss work, so I just told them to cut the arm off, and I'm going to go back to work. And they went back to work like the same day. Like, crazy, right? And then the craziest part with all of that is now Tiger King is in jail. I think that encampment is gone. And so now that person is at home watching TV with half an arm on purpose. I'm like, make it make sense. But literally, I think we're at the space where there are some Trump supporters who are in that same realm, right? Okay, it's kind of like he's one step from Jim Jones territory. And I was just saying that on my last live. There are some folks where if Trump were to be like, you know what, America's corrupt, everybody's out to get me, witch hunter, all the different things he says. And he's like, I'm moving to Guyana and I'm going to start my own Trump town, just like Georgetown or, or Jonestown. There's going to be people who go out in droves, right? They're going to be getting on the planes ready to go. Hopefully they're not getting on a Boeing flight because I don't know if they're going to make it or not. I would say they might hop on the Trump jet, but that's a Boeing 757 from 1991. Good luck. But anyway, there's folks who at this point would do that. That's how much you have people who literally worship this man. And so you have people who are gonna do any and everything to protect him, which is why I thought that once she knew when she made that announcement that you know all daggers were gonna be pointed in her direction because that's exactly what happened. Like, like I said, she had been trending on social media long before this found its way to the court because folks were digging trying to find something, right? And then on top of that, then you when you bring in the conversation of race, can we be for real on this channel? If you don't follow me at this point, it, it, surprise, we, we have real conversations here, okay? Um, that conversation of race, right? There is a huge element uh, of white nationalism and anti-blackness in a lot of this, right? And so the idea of a black woman going after a powerful white man, right? Y'all can get as mad as you want, but in my opinion, there's a lot of white men who have inferiority complexes when it comes to black women. A lot of black, uh, white men are also very intimidated by black women, especially because I think folks know that black women tend to see through nonsense, right? And everybody knew Fonnie Willis is about to have her ish together with that case. I'm sure that case that she is building is going to be one serious one, right? And so you automatically are going to get that double aggression, right? And, and you see that it's not just with Fonnie Willis, but a lot of times when you have black women who are in prominent positions or in positions of receiving grace and accolades, there's always somebody breaking their neck to try to tear it down, whether that be in entertainment. We notice a lot of black women in entertainment often get their work kind of shunned down, especially by a lot of white male critics a lot of times. We've already kind of done that with one of my music talk episodes in regard to just how they kind of see music. But like, even Michelle Obama was first lady, right? Because folks could not go after her education, you know, because she had a whole law degree. They couldn't go after her as a mother because she was hands-on. They couldn't go after really anything. What did they go after? They decided, we're going we're gonna to go after her looks. Now, all of a sudden, Michelle Obama is un unattractive. And I'm sitting here looking like, have we not seen what some of these other previous first ladies look like? Because if we want to talk about shriveled up faces, let's not go there. And then if we want to talk about something that came after, when we talk about all the filler and Botox that the, the previous one had, let's not go there. But... Um, you know, so you just kind of see it. So I just, I just knew that Fonny was going to be aware of what was coming. So when this all came out, and I'm like, Fonny, you're supposed to have that together. Ain't supposed to be no surprises at this point. You are literally going up against, listen, you're not taking down John Edwards, right? You're not going after Anthony Weiner. This is Donald Trump. This is somebody who, <laughs> by any means necessary, he's going to make it happen in his case, right? And so I just thought they'd be a bit more together on that. But you know, you see how it goes. And then the worst part, because this has overshadowed the actual case, because when it's all said and done, this is about somebody who attempted to overthrow an election and overthrow a state election and try to pretty much dismiss the votes of the citizens. That is the offense. But it's kind of shifted where people have put this woman on trial because she was in a consensual relationship. Right. And then they want to paint the picture of her being all kind of harlots and everything else, all in the name of integrity and conflict of interest. And I'm like, let's not even jump into the integrity and conflict of interest conversation when Clarence Thomas is still in the Supreme Court. Please. I don't want to hear it. We're not about to talk about integrity when the very man that everybody's trying to cape for and paint to, to be Jesus or whatever they want him to be has a whole sexual assault case flowing and 91 million dollar judgment and a hush money trial going on because he done paid off the porn star and then you got, you got case after case after case i don't want to hear it so let's not but again 
that conversation of race and also that conversation of just the, the, the blind faithfulness that people have behind this man, the goalpost is going to move. So it doesn't matter what Trump does. He can never be wrong in the eyes of hardcore Trump support, supporters. They are going to ride or die, right? So it, it, it's just wild out here. But um, yeah, I, I figured she would stay on and he would either step down or be fired because they've already kind of done the work. But I also will say, had she stepped down, understand that she would have already had plan B ready. She would have already stepped down and the next person that was in line would have already been prepped with everything they needed to know and everything they needed to do. Because I just feel like she's somebody who has her stuff together in that realm, right? Now, it kind of sucks because I think it definitely has tarnished, you know, her career, mainly because of how things move and how they're going to paint this woman to be, you know, how they're going to vilify her. And, you know, so I'm sure we will unfortunately hear more about this in different scopes and different realms. They're going to try to do whatever they do. This case is supposed to continue in August. We'll see. But, you know, Trump has been very successful at continuing to push all of these cases back. All four of his major cases are all delayed at this point. Right. So the class or the classified documents of Mar-a-Lago push back. Right. Jack Smith case push back. Right. Stormy Daniels case push back. This one here kind of got delayed because of everything with this. The whole situation around the immunity thing. That's what April 22nd, 25th. So he's been able to get his way so far. We'll see how this unfolds. But like I said, I just, when you're going up against something so chaotic, you just supposed to, you got to have it together because they're going to be looking for stuff, right? That's why I don't deal with nobody at work like that anyway, because I wouldn't want to really have those kind of ties to anybody at work. Because what happens when y'all split, but y'all still got to be in the same office together? Or like one of you get a promotion and the other person has to be, you know, work up under you or vice versa. Like how, how does that work? Especially when y'all are having a bad day, <laughs> right? Um, anyway, we'll see how this unfolds. Anyway, share your two cents. I'm out. Subscribe.